<laughs> Hello, everyone, to uh, what is going to hopefully be a very unhinged dip into just the cracked world of 2009 Beppets. Uh, somebody, somebody linked me this document. It was Beauty Joe. It was Beauty Joe during our, our stream last uh, last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beauty Joe sent me this. And uh, when, this is totally cracked out. And I looked at one page, and I immediately DM'd my co-host here, Sanguinary Novel, and went, hey, you're a graphic designer. You want to you wanna weigh in on this? It's a document that's, like, made the rounds on the internet several, several times. Especially, like, it's sort of infamous if you've been in design for at least 15 minutes. But it's also <laughs> one that I've seen maybe like a few highlights of and then i saw it was like how many pages is this like it's it's a decent chunk like normal branding guides are like you know pretty short but this is like this this is going to change your life but i mean probably i want to establish your life before we change it so that people can see the measurable shift that pepsi brings to you okay and so <laughs> I, I want to define our roles a little bit in this, okay? I've I've okay. scrolled through this document a little bit. I've had a whole lot of caffeine in the form of Pepsi this morning. Uh, and I would like to be the Pepsi boy today. I will be reading the document to you with all of oh, the so enthusiasm I, of a TED Talk. So at, by the end of this, a Pepsi boy will become a Pepsi man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This is a coming of age brand. <laughs> so in the last 10 seconds, I have established for you and also the audience three questions that I think are going to establish your Pepsi identity. Okay, everybody? So feel free to type these into chat, put them in a notepad, hold on to these for the end of our presentation today. So, uh, I mean, a, a quiz for your identity is also extremely 2008. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. All right. We're we're gonna go over to the layout. <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody to uh, what it looks like if I were to do sponsored content. I feel like it's very appropriate now, before we get super invested in this, to tell you this is not sponsored content. I am not being oh God, paid no. by anybody. This is this is not this is not an ad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody, it is time for the questions. Sanguinary, are you ready to answer some questions? Oh, oh, absolutely. I, I am. I, I'm not trying to figure out why it's showing uh, <laughs> my my Discord name. It's yeah, but uh, <laughs> it's it just ties in. It does whatever your Discord. Did. It's fine. Oop, audio double uh, up. Fine, whatever. Uh, Okay, anyways, yes, I'm ready for your questions. I'm focused. I just noticed that your overlay is Pepsi on top of your snake. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> it's, it's got big David Bowie energy, don't you think? Mm. Yeah. It, yeah, actually. If David Bowie... <laughs> did David Bowie sell out? Anyways, go for it. <laughs> if David Bowie sold out to Pepsi. <laughs> A horrible, horrible reality. <laughs> All right, everybody, get your get your typing fingers ready. And also, Sanguinary, I would like to encourage you to, to, to write down your answers so that we can review them later when you realize how wrong you were about your oh. life and Pepsi. Oh. <laughs> okay, you know. everybody. Yep. Question one. What is your earliest memory with Pepsi? Mm. Like, how far back do you and the Peps go? Thank you for the subscription. I hope I hope that you enjoy a delicious beverage today of some brand quality or denomination. <laughs> Hitherto unknown. Okay. Okay. I mean, are you gonna tell us your answer? Or are you just right? Oh, I didn't know. I thought we were saving this. Okay. This, uh... this is an audio medium at the moment. <laughs> hey, you said we were gonna review it at the end, so I was well, just saving it. We okay, will. but. Uh, if you need to know now, I, I would clearly, like to. <laughs> my first memory uh, was uh, we lit or when I were where I was born. It was a small one stoplight town, and uh, walking up to the corner store, 
and uh, looking at the Pepsi and going, this is not what I'm here for, <laughs> and then walking past it. So clearly, my, my origin Pepsi story is just real bad. It's just really bad for marketing. My... Oh my god, I can't believe you gave Pepsi the slip in your first Pepsi encounter. My earliest memory of Pepsi, like as a, as a brand or product, is uh, being at a restaurant and having my father be furious that all they had was Pepsi. <laughs> the man wanted a Coke, damn it. <laughs> so this is your first act of defiance against, you know, your parental figures is... Uh... <laughs> Enjoying a Pepsi in full sight of a Coke lover. This you know, I, I could see why you were chosen as the face of the Pepsi. <laughs> when I was gifted the holy texts. <laughs> All right. The question, holy liquid. <laughs> question two of three. Don't worry, this isn't super long. Okay. What is your favorite memory with a Pepsi? Uh, let's see. Favorite memory with a Pepsi. Uh, probably, uh, it's a, it's a reoccurring one. Every time somebody introduces the concept of pilk and, uh, <laughs> I have to kind of wrestle, I have to wrestle with like what life means and existential crises. Every time somebody's like, man, I love pilk. And I'm like, you're doing this as a bit. And they're like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> Oh, oh man, yep. <laughs> I didn't think those words were going to come into this holy house today. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> I mean, I'm two for two on dissing the Pepsi brand. I'm like, wow, look, I, I dissed it. And then also, all I can remember is people adding stuff to Pepsi and ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, hey, have you not heard of Pilk? Do, do you guys? Oh man, do you want to do it or can I? Uh, <laughs> go for it, Waffly. Hey y'all, I love to spice up my milk with a little bit of cool, refreshing Pepsi. I call it Pilk. <laughs> love me my Pilk. Gotta <laughs> have my Pilk. You know, Just... you look up milk and you're like, man, you know what this lactose needs? <laughs> A little bit more sugar and some carbonation and, oh, God, by God, Pepsi. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's... Oh, there's more than one person who gets to, gets to understand what milk is today. Wow, the stream is doing it's doing the best things for everyone. Milk would be forbidden if this were actually sponsored. You see, this is this is why you you fund your favorite streamers like directly, right? Like you know, with subs and Patreon and stuff. Because otherwise, we can't talk about milk. It has to remain forbidden knowledge, and nobody wants that. <laughs> Everybody needs. It to doesn't know. want you to know about milk. <laughs> <laughs> Big Pep doesn't want you to know about milk. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta look at this. <laughs> Dubs, ten out of ten. <laughs> oh yeah, this stream is here to educate. We're gonna, we're gonna be, ch we're changing your life. So like, if everybody else isn't writing down your relationship with Pepsi, start writing it down. We need to know for later. <laughs> yeah, it's I need important. to steal. Yeah, I need to steal that data, and so I can sell it to <laughs> Pepsi later on. I mean, research. <laughs> So my last, my, well, actually I have to tell you my favorite experience with Pepsi. Yeah. It, it is, it is one time when I was out on a particularly intense, uh, bicycle run. Like we're talking like we were, we were going for like a, like a metric century, you know, hundred kilometers or whatever riding is, is, is absolutely cracked. Uh, we stopped somewhere and I asked somebody if I could have some water They were coming to their house and like have a glass of water. And they said, no. And they brought me a Pepsi, which not only was hydrating, but also had sugar in it, which I very desperately needed after like 58 miles of bicycle riding. I was dying actively. So Pepsi, Pepsi that one time was the correct beverage for me. But I have I one more question. Okay, okay, one okay. More one I'm more ready. question, everybody, and then we can start to review the Pepsi design Bible. What does Pepsi mean? to you what is pepsi what is me? pepsi i mean if, if i'm not gonna be a sarcastic asshole for like 30 seconds oh uh, that's not necessary um, <laughs> 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 yeah 
that, that's why we're friends, because you're like, nah, you're good. Uh, <laughs> I ain't getting sponsored I, by Pepsi for this. Uh, I would say, like, if I put myself in the designer shoes, it's like Pepsi as in, as in like, you know, pep, because it's got that pep rally, pep things. It's like, oh, it's got some energy. Uh, <laughs> and, and then it's also apparently run by mobster bosses, so it's like, hey, you got the Pepsi. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, 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 I could see that. <laughs> it's, it's the pep you can see. <laughs> um, for for me, Pepsi is inextricably linked with Moomin, uh, because the first exposure I ever <laughs> had to Moomin was, uh, it, it was Snufkin and Moomin trading a Pepsi back and forth. <laughs> That was it. That was, it's set to music. It was cute. <laughs> oh god, the Pepsi riot stop. I forgot about that shit. Caitlyn Jenner being like, here's a can of Pepsi. <laughs> what, you're not using it as a weapon? Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Alright. Alright, everybody. That's it. We've registered the three questions. My furious dad, my crashing blood sugar, Moomin Troll. Those three things, those those are on the ledger now. Everybody knows where they stand between themselves and Pepsi. And it is time to transform that relationship with this presentation. Okay, everybody. It's time for breathtaking design strategy. 2008. I... Oh, uh, you, you always know, like... Starting out and like your your brand pitch, uh, like design strategy document. I know this is like, with according to the giant fucking stamp, this is work in progress. Like you are extremely <laughs> confident in your design if all you have is like four lines of text, mm -hmm. and you're like, it's gonna knock them out. Pe Pepsi speaks for itself, you know. It's it's, oh. it's good. I hope that this is is sufficient for everybody. This is all. I, I tried doing this zoomed in, and like sometimes you just gotta soak a whole page up. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> if you need to, like, uh, Control Plus on your browser will like make everything a little bit bigger. Full screen this, like, squint. You know, it's gonna t it's gonna be a little bit of a thing. You know how graphic designers and minimalism go together. Oh uh, yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> All right, it begins. I'm, excuse me while I assume my role as as Pepsi Man, Pepsi Boy, as it were. All right. A. Breaking the code for innovation. From convention to innovation. That doesn't even work as a rhyme, also. <laughs> Breathtaking trajectory of innovation. A. How do we move from convention to innovation? Convention, innovation. Well, I'm glad they, like, you know, I thought it was a long, arduous journey from convention to innovation, straight but I know it's a, it's a straight shot. You can't miss it. <laughs> right. Straight shot. Everybody's doing it. B. By investing in our history and brand ethos, we can create a new trajectory forward. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna, we're we're bypassing innovation. Okay, okay, going, where are we going? We're going, going we different going? from innovation. It's different. We're going to the future with C. The investment in our DNA leads to the breakthrough, innovation, and allows us to move out of the traditional linear system and into the future, which wouldn't come unless we got away from innovate. Oh, oh, okay, so the future is better than innovation. Got it, got it. Continued investment provides us with a clear resource for reinvention. So we're going to the future and then back a little bit. <laughs> People aren't ready yeah, yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah, we went to the future. We saw the horrible things there that uh, Pepsi had caused. So we went back a little bit to the house beyond <laughs> days before like, Pepsi caused the terrible future. <laughs> this is turning into an 80s movie. Kinda, yeah. B. The origins of creative endeavors, universal Wait, design in... principles, and PepsiCo's brand heritage. Yeah, that was all of it. What about it? That was, that was it? That's the document you, or like part of the document you, that's I just, guess. That's just part one. We're, we're prepping people. They got to know where we're going. It's not innovation. We're not going there. We're going to the future sanguinary. The future. <laughs> that does feel like a C-suite thing. It's like, you thought we were going to innovate this. <laughs> we're going to the fucking future. And then they're all doing coke. So they're like, yeah. 
Hell yeah! <laughs> Put on your wraparound sunglasses. It's 2008, and we're going to the future. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> okay. Design principles and, and and the heritage. I'm I'm on it. I hope there's a lot of lines too. <laughs> Breathtaking brand heritage and the aesthetics of simplicity. The Pepsi ethos has evolved over time. The vocabulary of truth and simplicity is a recurring phenomena in the brand's history. It communicates the brand in a timeless manner and with an expression of clarity. Pepsi breathtaking builds on this knowledge. True innovation always begins by investigating the historic path. Going back to the roots moves the brand forward as it changes the trajectory of the future. I need the map back, because now we're going back. <laughs> That's a fucking question mark! <laughs> I, I like how this timeline is literally two things. The origin, I'm sure. 1970. Not even anything from like the 90s or 2000s or, or right now. And next year, it's just like... <laughs> Oh my god. What the fuck? Universal design principles. Breathtaking is a strategy based on the evolution of 5,000 plus years of shared ideas in design philosophy, creating an authentic constitution of design. This chart documents the origin and evolution of intellectual property. Oh, Beginning yeah, that... in oh. 30,000 BC in Vastu oh, Sastra. I the Hindu tradition of numeric harmony as a spatial organizer. I'll go straight to hell. <laughs> also, like, this feels like a document you would pick up in, like, a, uh, in a, uh, what's that Assassin's game? Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Just like, oh, look, look, throughout time, there was the orb, but throughout time, there was Pepsi. We went back in time and put more Pepsi back there. <laughs> 600 BC. Oops, I just slapped my can of Pepsi across my desk. I should lose that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very, I know. I'm you Pepe, saw Pepe Sylvia-ing oh. over here. <laughs> <laughs> 600 BC. Musica Mundana. Pythagoras creates spatial hierarchies from musical scales. There was not a lot of development in this time, it would seem. <laughs> 300 yeah. BC. <laughs> Golden music, Ratio. Right? Euclid explores the mathematics and the proportion of nature. 278 hey. BC, Feng Shui, ancient Chinese art of placement and spatial arrangement. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. Oh no, you're fine, you're fine. I'm just like, I'm just fucking flabbergasted. Like, I, I think they went through like an image search. Also, like the Mona Lisa's in there. <laughs> <laughs> also, the Vitruvian Man, but we're not there yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 70 Continue. BC, Vitruvian principle. In De Architectura, he demands strong, useful, beautiful. 1452, the art of building. Alberti draws on the relation of numbers and areas. 1455, the Vitruvian Renaissance, rediscovery of the Vitruvian principles and their publication. Now we're at the Vitruvian Man. <laughs> uh, they don't know any... There wasn't, like, anything else at that time. It's just a Vitruvian Man. It, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Nothing else was circular. It. We couldn't use it. <laughs> La Geomerti. Descartes develops the Cartesian coordinate system. Oh. 1858. The Mobius Strip. What? Mobius creates a surface with only one side and edge. 1948. Oh, Modulor. <laughs> Le Corbusier draws algebraic relations in the human body. And then that brings us to 2009. Pepsi. Introducing Breathtaking. Ah, uh, yes. The, the true Renaissance drink. Uh, <laughs> you know thousands of years of um, you know, work and evolution and human thought has all brought us to the now in the world's most fucked up Gallifreyan timeline I've ever seen. <laughs> what? <just, it's> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I like how this, like, supposes that, uh, 
like this timeline they've made, they're like, we've drawn circles for each one. I, don't ask me about the size of things. <laughs> well, and from that, we've derived the Pepsi. <laughs> well, you can see from the exceptionally clear area right in the center where nothing is confusing at all. Right, right, right. <laughs> that, that there's 3,000 years ago, you know, look, this is a, this is a very professional document, okay? They spent a million yeah. dollars on this. <laughs> oh, was it a million? Or are you being like... I think so. I think that's accurate. Oh, man. I'll, I'll look up at the end of the stream because I am curious. This sounds about, this sounds about right for $2,008. <laughs> Moving on with our presentation. Breathtaking. Iconic geometry. Derived from PepsiCo's rich packaging legacy and inspired by some of its earliest forms and proportions. Breathtaking revitalizes the essence of PepsiCo in creating an iconic shape for the brand. By using just the 2000s bottle design, I guess. It's fine, it's fine. I like how they just stacked it all on top of each other. I mean, they omitted a few. Like, where the fuck is the 1915, yeah. like, <laughs> seltzer spray bottle? Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, where where was my futuristic 2009 bottle with, like, a nubbin <laughs> off the side? I mean, we've been denied the actual future, and we just got innovation. This bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> we just got innovation. Also, Thomas has, has dropped the thing in chat. I would, like, to encourage everybody to take a second to click on that. <laughs> uh, uh dubs i think you went too far into the future that was like remember back at that whatever thing we were looking at where they went to like the future future and had to like take a step back what they saw at the perfect future was Dubs' design. And I'm like, whoa, too spicy. <laughs> See, that's why we had to double back. I get it. I get it now. I'm seeing the corrections. Yeah, Dubs is right. Hand pumped Pepsi. That's why they had to take that bottle out, too. <laughs> it's not carbonated until you request it. Have it your way. <laughs> 1989 to 2009 retained the best of PepsiCo's history and shape. The next PepsiCo bottle into an icon for the brand. Yeah, it's literally the 2001 again. Breathtaking. Oh. Tracing the Pepsi DNA, 1898. 1896, Pepsi geometries, perimeter oscillations. The Pepsi DNA finds its origin in the dynamic of perimeter oscillations. This new identity manifests itself in an authentic geometry that is to become proprietary to the Pepsi culture. And then... <laughs> we trademarked it, these circles. I need you to suck this in. I, I just like I've seen these in like like some of these circles and things, and it's usually reserved for a lot of like typeface stuff. And you'll kind of see like the harmony and balance of circles and how they intersect and stuff to make this really, you know, very visually appealing um, letter form. But w this like. <laughs> I also like how, because they hand, you know, they know they hand, you hand, like the Arnell group handed this off to an intern and they're like, I don't know, fucking circle some shit. Because at least like the, the, the circular timeline from earlier, I'm like, okay, this at least looks visually interesting. This is a fucking mess. What did you pull from this? <laughs> Like, like, it's so clear to see that this original logo was done by, like, some guy with a stub nib pen, you know? Like, like all these flourishes are, like, when you just, like, turn it flat again, like, after doing your stroke. But, like, no, we're just gonna vector some circles on it. Okay, let's get a little more reductionist right here. Oh, yeah, let's, well, like, okay, if we, look... The first one's, like, okay, you see, this is a mess, but if we remove the logo... <laughs> Makes yeah. perfect sense now. This is this is clarity. But don't worry, we're gonna build on this. We're gonna build on this. We're gonna build on it. All right. That's what okay, that's what okay. innovation in the future are all about. Is building on the rich, caramely heritage of the past. Yeah, I see a sad Kirby in the corner. That makes sense. <laughs> oh God. Uh, the bottom left. He's kind of like ah. <laughs> you know, if if I tilt my head left ways, he's doing a poyo. Just, <laughs> just point that out. Doing a pollo and also dropping a fat log. <laughs> oh, yes. Pepsi is about dropping fat logs. Got See, it. you could tell that the original Pepsi logo was bad because it even includes a fat shit being dropped by Kerbo Puyoing horizontally left way. <laughs> See, there's 
there's so much to be read into this like uh <laughs> Like the history, like the the very origin of Pepsi, we can all take away so much. <laughs> oh, that's all beautiful. right, onward into the rich, rich future of 1905. Future. 1905, Pepsi geometries, perimeter oscillations. You can see they've included the word drink in case you were confused and were injecting <laughs> Pepsi, which back in the day. It was medicine, so you gotta you gotta remember that people may have done that. In fact, they're like, actually, maybe we should like calm down on the whole like uh, snake medicine, snake oil medicine, and just do uh, you know. Oh, that makes sense. You know, it started as snake oil. You're a snake. There we go. I, I, I'm on it. <laughs> truly, truly, I am the perfect spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really oh enjoying, God. it's very hard to see it, but the circle that makes up the top of, like, the drink flag, it doesn't yeah. even align with the drink flag. Like, can I zoom in on that? Is that if I hold control? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, it's fun. We get to see all the other ones where it doesn't align. I like this little BB circle kind of, like, at the top of the, the P flourish. Oh, yeah, that itty-bitty one. Yeah, it just, you know, it's there. They're like, ah, finally, a clean circle and not a, a weird hemisphere. It's it's very important and not some coked-up bullshit that they put in here to make the document longer. Oh, man. So, so, like, I, I understand, like, a lot of design pitches will have, like, a bit of extra stuff in it to make it feel better. Because if you just handed someone a logo, they're going to be like, uh, what? Who gives a shit? Oh, yeah. But if you add oscillations, whoa, if, whoa. If, if I learned anything in my time in community college pursuing a graphic design degree, uh, uh -huh. it was that the more bullshit you can put on a piece of art, the more money it's worth. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. like every everybody who is graduating from like the fine arts course, you, you got a piece of art, sure, but the 30-page manifesto that came with it, that's where the true meaning was explored. Not in what you've actually presented to your audience, but no, in your ancillary supportive documentation of your piece of art. <laughs> yeah, and if I've learned anything from art school, the more, like, the longer your artist statement, the less work you've probably put into <laughs> your art, actually. <laughs> Jen Spider, I don't want wobbly oil. You and the rest of Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on! <laughs> Getting into tracing the Pepsi DNA, 1929. 1929, Pepsi Geometries, Perimeter Oscillations. This is even worse. <laughs> what is this? I, what the fuck? This is not helpful. This is nothing. I know they're trying to eventually get to like that Pepsi swirl shape, but this you could have just said, hey, look, in this old Pepsi logo, it's a little bit squished, but see, we have this kind of like this swirl shape. Yeah, and then it kind of carries through history. No, you're going to draw a bunch of fucking ovals all over everything to it lo the logo looks like a goddamn balloon animal and then go. See? 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 <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm seeing people in chat. I'm seeing people saying, did they make this stone? Were they high? Were they on drugs? No, they were drinking Pepsi. Have you never had one? Come on. <laughs> uh, and the real answer is Coke. It's always Coke. It's always like actual <laughs> like cocaine. Rich people do cocaine. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, oh. Tina, Tina, hang on. Let me, uh, let me... Let me enhance. Expand on, yeah, zoom and enhance. You it see, is, uh. <laughs> that's the curve of the straight line <laughs> from the back end yeah. of the Pepsi logo. If you zoom in, it kind of looks like, you know, a <laughs> Tiffany lamp, like, met a, an alternative universe. I just, I, I just love every time we zoom in, too. We get to see all of the things like the intern didn't give a shit about. Like they gave up with the E. They're like, what are we doing with this E? I don't know. Yeah, this, like what is this one extra circle like this actual, eyeball here? Actual nothing. It's it's aligned with actual nothing. Like <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I like all the faces this makes, though. This is like a pareidolia experience. Hang on, I, I also want to take us back really quick uh, to this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, where they had that. Note, notable evolution. Notable evolution of the brand continuum inside of the metaverse that is the Pepsi branding, right? Notable evolution. This circle must have become the big circle. Huh? Huh? Dr. Dubs, you can't just add a Fibonacci spiral to everything and call it perfect. So perfect. <laughs> no, Dubs, I'm gonna shove a golden mean rectangle on top of everything. <laughs> this <laughs> golden mean, that golden mean, it's perfect. <laughs> Oops. Also, I really, I really enjoy this particular phase, uh, just on its own. I can almost almost imagine the idea that the letters for Pepsi are in there somewhere. <laughs> I, I mostly see poopy. <laughs> I see like a poo too a little bit. <laughs> I, I see a lot of screaming drugged out faces though too. <laughs> you know what? This is a fun coloring book activity. Hey everybody, take a screenshot of this stream and just like alert. You know, like like come on, do do some art, you know? Like let's let's go everybody. <laughs> oh man, could you imagine like if you went to this, like you're during this presentation, you've handed out the Coke to everybody, you, you know, your gift to everyone. And then you hand out like a blank sheet with just this on it and a bunch <laughs> of crayons. And they're like, find the Pepsi that speaks to you in this and color in that Pepsi. I, I go to my therapist and they tell me we're going to try a different uh, approach. And they hand me this and some coloring pencils. <laughs> tell me, what do I find? Yeah, it's a Rorschach for dipshits. <laughs> That's a very expensive dip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, let's continue moving into the future. <laughs> Breathtaking, tracing the Pepsi DNA, 1930, 1930 okay, Pepsi geometries, perimeter oscillations. This is literally the same logo as last time, but instead it's in like, it's the rectangle version you would put on like the driver's patch. <laughs> Sanguinary, it's what's in the box. What's in the box? Oh, I, ho I hope they copied and pasted it, but you know they didn't. They made this person redraw this. What is this? This is nothing. This is a bunch of tits in space, is what we're looking at. Tubs, that's amazing. Oh my god, I have to I have to save these. <laughs> I've been dying. <laughs> my my body. <laughs> Tully Chip Dubs, thank you for putting the golden rectangles to smack on fucking top. Not even I think my favorite addition to that is that the golden rectangle isn't like aligned with the vertical space. It's just fucking there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now it is disarray. RV. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh shit. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Are we Okay, okay. Yep. There's yep. not there's not okay. a lot of ground to retread on this one, sadly. There wasn't a lot of uh I mean there there was innovation, right? But they didn't go to the future between nineteen twenty nine and nineteen thirty. Yeah, they 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 saw the future and were cowards and did not go towards it. And they're like, we'll just do a little bit of, you know, a little modification. <laughs> it's still Pepsi colon cola. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. They got them them double dots, which notably do not have any curves. And that's how you know they're not part of the future. <laughs> Breathtaking. Tracing the Pepsi DNA. 1962. 1962 Pepsi Geometries, perimeter oscillations. Lot of innovation here, no future going. Just throwing this here. I like how they they just boxed <laughs> in the Pepsi this time. Like this is this is a level where you could actually start picking up the circles and stuff, like inside the P and like you know, from 
like the curves of stuff or the S and they're like not even touching it. I Look. fucking hate this. I hate this. This is gross. <laughs> there's there's just no circles now. None, none. They're getting rid of the circles, right? You can see it's taken shape. It's taken a little bit. They moved the rectangle in ways from the out ways, you see, right? Like like they they it's now it's now <laughs> up in. <laughs> I I just I mean, they're not even, like, getting the... Okay, this is where they're just admitting, like, hey, this swoosh from the Pepsi swoosh thing is just what we took. <laughs> they can't highlight it too much. My, my favorite weird edit to this that I do not understand is hmm. there's this white box that clips the very bottom of the logo and also removes... What was that? What was supposed to be there? I think they just intended to block out 1962 um, and then like instead of editing like depending on which program they were in like you could edit the actual image and they're like fuck it just put a box over it and I think it got pushed up a bit because this is like a document in progress this isn't the final one I, the final one probably would have melted people's brains they had to stop I would like to take one moment and I have to yeah. roast our friend Beauty Joe down there who's not paying attention to history they had a box look it's 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 big and it's blue and it's completely undocumented by the ovals. Hang on, I have to walk that one back. <laughs> they, they, they documented the big loopy up here, but they didn't get the box. No, you are correct. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just... I... Big apologies to friend of stream, Beauty Joe. <laughs> Our boy. Oh, but now God. there's a box. You're right. The box has I... emerged. I just think, like, I, I want to call them out for being cowards and their lack of commitment to doing a circle for each and every one of the ridges in the bottle cap. <laughs> like, you could have had, like, a whole array of circles, but no. <laughs> oh, this must have been a late night for someone. Or just, fuck it. Fuck it. I don't know. This is all I got. <laughs> Breathtaking. Tracing the Pepsi DNA 1971. 1971 Pepsi Geometry's Perimeter Oscillations. Check that out. Box. This is literally the last one! We got, we got, no, we got a second box! It's different! It's different! There's a box on the outways and also the inways. Alright, uh, alright, alright. We've taken, we've taken many of the circles, we've discarded them. We didn't need those circles. Nobody has to remember those circles. Forget those perimeter oscillations. Remember the boxes. The boxes key the critical crucial that we're adding I, I, wonder, I wonder if they're trying to say like they tried to contain the energy of pepsi in the 60s and 70s they tried to like contain the circular energy and we're here to release that energy again and uh man i should i thought like th this wicked coffee i made would give me the energy of cocaine but mm, no mm. i guess i need cocaine to see it <laughs> there's no coke only pepsi Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, this is, to just bring up a, a thing. Do you think, like, at the Pepsi headquarters, like the C-suites, we don't, we to don't call it cocaine. We call it Pepane. <laughs> <laughs> you're at this office. You're, you're doing no a line of pep on the strippers' ass in the 1980s. Like, hey, I'm going to the bathroom to do a line of pep. Do you want to join me? <laughs> I agree, Jen. I agree. It's like I put on the face makeup for nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Oh, that's that's actually explains a lot about me. I'm an infiltrated agent for Coke. I was actually sponsored by Coke to ruin this Pepsi document. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like they're making some strides towards the future in that regard themselves. <laughs> Breathtaking. <laughs> Tracing the Pepsi DNA. 1991, the best year, the year of the wobbles. 1991, Pepsi Geometry's perimeter oscillations. 14 degrees. Oh, we're breaking out the fucking angles now. Whoa. What? I wonder if it's just because, like, the logo has gotten simplified and they're like, we don't have enough oscillations. They're not going to believe us if we don't have more oscillations. Throw in an angle. It'll blow their minds. They're like, oh, I see you honk shooing over there. Oh, snork me, me, me. Oscillations. What about fucking 14 degrees? It's not even 15. It's 
14. <laughs> Zero degrees, I sleep. 14 degrees, <laughs> real shit! <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have moved our boxes. We have rejected the boxes in this one, you'll notice. Yes, the parallelogram. Boxes different <laughs> they're not they're not containing nor are they present within they are adjacent they're, they're adjacent and askance the 14 degrees <laughs> i it's 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 like during these two iterations of the pepsi logo they're all like this is when pepsi became cool you know people are straight edge and they're like sitting up straight but cool people they gotta lean We've looked at pictures of Fonzie and measured his lean, and we all found that it was 14 degrees exactly. 14 is the scientifically the coolest lean. 14 is 2 7. 7 is a critical component of 22 over 7, which is pi, which is the foundation of curves, which is the foundation of Pepsi. Okay, no, that is actually very much like. Peak bullshit, like, branding speech. I, I did go to school for this for a while. <laughs> I know, you did say that, yes. If there's ever, if anybody ever wonders on Twitter, like, wow, Wobbly for being, like, a finger quotes influencer positioned person is really shitty about brands and branding, I did go to school for it for a while. <laughs> oh, dude, agencies are fucks. Like, just like some backstory, I worked as in-house, which is like, you're just for one person's graphic design bitch for an entire company. Yeah. Agency people are something else. Like, I've applied <laughs> to a bunch of agencies, and they're like, I'm sorry, you didn't start an age at an agency. Uh, you're a little bit tainted. You don't believe in oscillations enough. <laughs> Your soul is impure. You cannot work for the breathtaking. Okay, anyways, okay, also, okay, so we Of course, Jen, of course you know where this ends. You live in the future. You avoided innovation. You're here with us together at the end product of Pepsi DNA. Jen, if we if we wanted to go on a second brand trip, uh I would have to probably put something together, but it would be the the influence of the design group Pentagram, oh, which for a really <laughs> cool name has ruined a lot of fucking logos. <laughs> if you want to see why every logo nowadays is a sans serif block font, it's pentagram, baby. Oh my god. I would I would genuinely be down to doing this again, but let's let's finish this one first uh, yeah, let's, to talk let's about that in the post stream. Every, yeah. Everybody fold that one up and put it in your pocket for a second. <laughs> Alright, let's go gamers. Okay. Breathtaking. Okay. Tracing the Pepsi <laughs> DNA nineteen ninety eight Pepsi Geometries Perimeter Oscillations. Uh, what a low resolution like somebody screenshot this from a browser page. It's like I brought in a like a case of Pepsi and cut it out. I do like just as a side note, this is like the year that like somebody at the Pepsi like who designed this logo was really fucking excited. They're like, I got this new 3D technology. What if it was an orb? Whoa. What if? So, so really, what we're not seeing, we're like, oh, this this Pepsi oscillation drawing, it's, it's so similar to the other ones. But since that Pepsi is an orb, if you turn the paper on its side, you can see the other oscillation. <laughs> That's right. If I if I tilt my my head left ways far enough, it becomes a D. <laughs> Pepsi D. Pepsi associating itself with the D. This was the horniest year for Pepsi, 1998. It is kind of peepus looking, isn't it? <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting the peepus. <laughs> we got the D. We got the peepus. But C. Towards innovation, projecting Pepsi's future, applying universal laws to establish a blueprint for the brand. Breathtaking, creation of identity, precedence. Artists and architects have proportioned their works to approximate the golden ratio, especially in the form of the golden rectangle, in which the ratio of the longer side to the shorter side is the golden ratio. They oh, believe. Back in our history class, time to fall asleep. <laughs> they believe this proportion to be universally and aesthetically pleasing. The golden ratio plays an essential role in human perception of beauty. 
I really like the phrasing, they believe this proportion to be universally and aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> with, with this unsaid <laughs> side note of, until Pepsi came along, they thought this was art. This is all they could think of until Pepsi came along. <laughs> this, this skepticism is why you're tainted. <laughs> Just saying, you got it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, gotta, I'm sorry. It's, gotta... it's the coke plant in here. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the bug in your molars that whispers coke secrets to you. <laughs> I think that's called a cavity. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Height and width of the Parthenon is proportioned to yield a golden rectangle. Leonardo da Vinci studied the proportion of the human face and applied his findings in the Mona Lisa painting. Book format and page layout are based on golden proportion. The diameter of the Nautilus shell increases proportionally with the golden ratio. At least the Nauta, Nautilus shell makes sense. Okay, Dubs. What? <laughs> 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 correct. Absolutely correct. <laughs> oh, see, no, Dubs is not knocking it out of the park. Dubs is ascending with oscillations into the future. Dubs is not innovating. Dubs is drinking the pilk and bringing himself into the future. I, I do like the idea of Dubs is actually in the far fung future, not the Pepsi future, the step beyond the Pepsi future, and is sending us missives. <laughs> look, look, Dubs, Dubs has not fully drunk in the pilk of the divine light yet, okay? Right? Maybe they got a little overzealous. Maybe they shot past the future a little bit. But that's what... That's that's what we learned. Hang on, we gotta go back, everybody. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We gotta we remedial gotta go this lesson. We gotta remedial uh, oh, it. I'm sorry. We gotta go all the way back because y'all have oh, forgotten your history. these oscillations as we're returning here. You've forgotten about continued investment providing us with a clear resource for reinvention. Dubs Please is on the reinvention arc. There's still Please hope. Keep giving us money. <laughs> <laughs> With the amount of money you've given us, we can only get this far into the future. <laughs> all right, now I have to go all the way back to the future. We have to reinvent the oh, good, 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 good. So, wait, Wobbly, did you know, like, as you're scrolling with the scroll wheel, it's also oscillation. So we're oscillating our Excuse me, I have to re-oscillate the timeline so that we can end up at reinvention instead of uh, innovator. <laughs> I am absolutely tradition. never calling it scrolling ever again. Hold on, let me to, oscillate on the page. Out. I have to re-oscillate. <laughs> Hang on, I'm falling off. I'm falling off the brand wagon here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, we're, we're here. Okay, we now, we now here, everybody in the document, are at yeah, invention. Yeah. We need to move towards innovation, but we're following the Pepsi DNA. But every time I have to have to go to the future, we keep reinventing ourselves back to this point. So everybody, everybody, hang on a second. <laughs> oh, man. We have to transcend the oscillations one more time. Okay. Oh, the oscillations. Okay, everybody. Okay, okay, okay. Breathtaking. Creation of identity. A blueprint for proportions. A, the golden ratio. It starts with a square. I'm pretty sure it starts with a rectangle, but sure. It starts with a square. <laughs> B, the Pepsi ratio. It starts with a circle. The straw is a circle with a diameter of D equals A. As you can see that a square, A equals A. Yeah, the diameter equals the diameter. <laughs> Fucking thank you, Pepsi. To find the center and draw two same size circles with the diameter D equals 0.5A. As you can see, that has nothing to do with our square on the left. There is no change. No, no, no. I... Rotate the center line 45 degrees. Copy one of the smaller circles. Place its center on the intersection of the larger circle and the rotated center line. You put a line. Uh, 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 
I mean, at least like this section, like this, the Pepsi ratio, which I love the detail of it, like being capitalized, like the golden ratio. They're all like, the golden ratio is old hat. We're onto the Pepsi ratio. I'm gonna Pepsi start applying ratio. this over the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Dubs, you know what to do. <laughs> Four. Draw a circle that lies within the larger one. Its diameter is such that it touches all three circles in exactly and only one point. I. Okay, I mean, yes, you've drawn some circles and then, like, they're touching each other. It looks pretty nice. Five! Rotate the center line by 56 degrees. Place the smallest circle with its center on the intersection of the largest circle and the rotated center line. I hope you all and are that, following along on the golden ratio as well. It's, it's yeah, doing yeah, the same we, steps. We, we turned it into an actual golden rectangle and then uh, put an arc in there. It was pretty nice. Yeah, you're drawing the Fibonacci or the, the fucking golden... Fucking son of bitches. Six. Anyways. The Pepsi brand is created by intersecting circles with a set proportion to each other. The coordinates are marked X. <laughs> Draw out this other shit. Discard it. <laughs> the Pepsi ratio is created by two simple circles that are in a set ratio to each other. The golden ratio. Okay, okay, so so we've made this moon shape, and then read number eight, and then I'll, I'll make my commentary. The Pepsi ratio is aesthetic geometry. Bitch, you, where, this is some draw the rest of the owl bullshit, because like, okay, we've made all of these shapes, and then, okay, like, <laughs> like if you ever see documents for building a font, like that makes sense, but then we get to like, we're gonna toss all that out. That's all garbage, actually. <laughs> and then we have this, like, two moon shape, and then all of a sudden we have the Pepsi, like, swoosh kind of offset. But nothing that says how we got there. I. Like, there's nothing between seven and eight. There's a whole other design document between seven and eight that said, like, hey, here's how we determine the arcs of these. They're just fucking gone. <laughs> I, I would I would like I don't know if anybody else is a is a SpongeBob SquarePants uh remember or fan. Remember that time that like Squidward tried to teach SpongeBob to draw a circle? <laughs> First I draw this head, then I erase a bunch of lines, <laughs> and then boom! Perfect circles. <laughs> and I like how they just drew like the golden like circle like right next to it just for fun, I guess. <laughs> All right. Like, hey, this is how you make it if you wanted to. <laughs> Except it's not. It's completely unhinged. <laughs> anyway, okay, no so I'm confused. <laughs> Breathtaking creation of identity scales and dynamic relationships. A, geometry of aesthetics proportion. The golden ratio establishes a proportion of one part A relative to another B. Playing by these rules produces an aestheticism that is universally accepted to be in balance and harmony. The Pepsi aesthetic respects these rules. The brand identity can be derived from two circles that have a set relation to each other. I hope you right, so, drink this uh, in. Okay, so okay, it. so it sort of makes sense. We we put two circles inside the golden rectangle we've drawn. Okay, I see where the curve came from, and then there's like, and then they went back to school, and they're like, "Here's what scale means." And then, holy shit, we're, this is the <laughs> finally directions into the Pepsi zone. <laughs> Pepsi is everything. Pepsi is all things. Pepsi, 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 Pepsi. Pepsi is all things. Geometry of aesthetics. Dynamics. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Look at this. This fucking gear design here. Got them. Got them relations happening right now. You can see clearly, as we have illustrated. Clearly. I mean, I guess. Like, at least this, like... 
this is like the only thing that has made sort of any sense. Like, like I, I, I really honestly believe that uh, most 90% of the brand document is right here in B. Like the actual work came in. They're like, how do we make this like swoosh look kind of nice? And like, if you've ever used any sort of vector tools and you try to do a swoosh, sometimes it's like, oh, this kind of looks like janky. But this makes sense. But like the rest of it, there's just so much like packing peanuts around this fucking bit that makes sense. <laughs> Sanguinary is beginning to believe they are coming to the future. Sanguinary, <laughs> very good, very good. I mean, I looked out the window and it's nice and all you kids are having fun. And now we're back to, no, <laughs> what is this? Creation of identity, dynamic forces. A, Ooh. the Earth's geodynamo. A naturally occurring electric generator in fluid motion generates and sustains the Earth's magnetic field. You have the bend of the document right there and you're like, the what Pepsi. if we fucking went wilder? The Pepsi globe. B, magnetic fields. Magnetic fields exert forces on inner and outer surfaces of the Earth. B, the Pepsi energy fields. Symmetrical energy fields are in balance. Are you feeling them? Chat, are you feeling the Pepsi energy fields? Are you here? Are you in the future? Chat, chat. I, I really like the unsaid thing of like, if, look, Pepsi is the center of the universe. I'm surprised it didn't go for that. It might be on the next page, but like, look, Pepsi is the center of the planet, which is why everyone's drawn to it. Without Pepsi, people would just be floating in space. That's why people tied themselves down in the past, because they it wasn't because they didn't know, understand the concept of gravity. It's because they didn't have Pepsi to anchor them to gravity the ground. Gravity is a lie! We're grounded by convention and innovation. <laughs> Salubrious, my granddaddy died working away in the Pepsi energy field. <laughs> Optimus Prime <laughs> fought for your Pepsi. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Hold on, booty. It's like the the sickos at it for the Amagara fault this morning, but instead of like the sickos window, it's the Pepsi logo. <laughs> Brand, it's big for me. We're not even done with this page. <laughs> oh Christ! Okay. Anyways, we're C. Keep scrolling. Oh. <laughs> Magnetic dynamics. Magnetic oh, fields <laughs> are impacted by sun radiation and wind motion. The Pepsi globe dynamics, emotive forces, shape the gestalt of the brand identity. Of the gestalt, go straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I saw the next page. This Creation is the one page of I've identity. Seen. Multiple perspectives, multiple point of views, one object, one oh. identity, multiple oh. emotions. Why? <laughs> I like how only one of them gets like kind of the squinty eyes, <laughs> but the rest of them are like. <laughs> This, the second one looks like he is about to mash down on the biggest cake, and the third one is like, oh shit, a second cake! <laughs> Maybe that's why everyone really likes that, that image, is because they're like, man, those two faces, they feel refreshing to me in a way I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Something in the universe is bringing me peace in my soul when I look at these faces. Fuck, hang on. <laughs> oh man. See, this is where the problem like of us trying to be fresh to this document. Uh, because if I would have thought about it, I would have made my talking logo this motherfucker. <laughs> Dubs, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, you just got it right. Pepsi game. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The Pepsi Hot Clan. <laughs> That's really something else. 
<laughs> Sasuke's like a coke murdered my entire clan. <laughs> meant by like holy shit look at these bottom ones i'm trying to figure out what 55 is conveying aside from being canadian in south park okay so i was trying to figure it out and it's kind of a problem because they're showing they're, they're trying to show a flat object being turned at 90 or like at these degrees mm -hmm. but they're drawing it from the side we're not looking at like the person is looking at it in profile and but we're looking at it we're looking at it in profile but they're looking at it straight on so it's just making this fucking nutso looking thing <laughs> i can't explain to you how that makes sense to this like pepsi thing on the side but you know what am i know i <laughs> clearly this is why they didn't let me into the agency because i couldn't stop laughing you were tainted you were tainted you were impure i, I guess so <laughs> no Forty is pepsi ratio here. <laughs> jesus I think I think my personal favorite is Pepsi 10 degrees. Oh is... fuck, it's 10 degrees. I'm surprised it's not that one because they're like Pepsi is so good, it's gonna give people orgasm. Therefore, <laughs> yeah. we need to use this one. Look, the 90s was a time of experimentation. We had Crystal Pepsi, we had Pepsi Blue, but they did not release Pepsi Nut because they were not brave enough. <laughs> oh wait, that's Pilk. <laughs> We cracked the code. <laughs> <laughs> the scientists at the Pepsi facility are like, no, Pepsi nut is too, too strong. They'll have to make it on their own. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Alright. Let's bring it home. Okay. Oh, I fucking With love these faces. Creation of identity, the face of a new generation. Oh, I do. I'm looking at you, brand document person. You kept that nut face in there. <laughs> yeah, number eight is definitely the face of the new generation, if you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying. <laughs> they predicted Gen Z already. <laughs> oh my god. I just. I... <laughs> I, I want, like, do you know if, like, in, like, elementary's and doctor's office, they have, like, those emotion charts? Like, what emotion are you feeling today? I, like, I just like want all chart. of these. Yeah, like, what, what, pep what are you on the Pepsi scale today? <laughs> you know what? That, that feels like a Brian David Gilbert skit, right? <laughs> yeah. BG's in the doctor's office, they hand him the chart, it's just this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I'm feeling kind of wry, so I'm, I'm thinking, like, bottom row, second in, you know? <laughs> that's, my, that's my Pepsi energy for today. <laughs> I'm feeling the ecstasy of Pepsi. I am absolutely number eight over here. I am this, oh, yeah, you, this is me right the, now. That's, that's the, the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling, I'm feeling the energy, you know? <laughs> I'm really just vibing with it. <laughs> Uh, Creation of identity, <laughs> a multi-dimensionalized brand. A motion transforms 2D into 3D. You heard it here first. Motion is the, <laughs> this the divider between the second dimension and the third. Fuck everybody who disagrees. From 2D circle to 3D sphere, a sphere is defined as the surface formed by rotating a circle about any diameter 
Did they watch <laughs> Contact before this or something? Because they're like, man, gyroscopes fucking kick ass. What if Pepsi was a... Like, if you look at it, it's three circles spinning around. The brand identity is dimensionalized through motion. Like, I bet you they did try to make it. It's like, can we do cans with like a pop out effect? They're like, no, no, fuck I, you. I want you to imagine trying to roll a can that has this fat fucking lump through a machine. And how just terrible an idea this is. Oh my god. Why did they. <laughs> through motion. Are they trying to say, like, if you whip the can at somebody? Like. The Pepsi logo comes off the can or something. I don't I don't understand what this is trying to say other than like Hey, it looks really cool. We put it on a can. I, I, just... actually, I actually know that pitch. It it was pop out fins. Uh Scuds McKenzie did not take off in the in the product trials, instead replaced by Spuds McKenzie, the original party dog. You see, they started with congressional contracts, uh, Raytheon and such, and they were trying very hard to get a militarized beverage brand <laughs> with Scuds McKenzie. Oh my god, it fucking, it's fucking, oh. I, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I... Creation of what? identity. Color theory. A. Objective color versus subjective emotion. Each color on the color wheel is associated with a subjective, psychic, and emotional value. Hey, hey do you remember the color wheel? How, like, for some reason, there were four, was it five blues and purples? Everyone else just got one, but there was like a fuckload of blues and purples for some reason. Chat, you're killing me. I'm trying very hard to bring you the word of Pepsi. I tried so hard. Oh, Dumb! Dumb! You son of a bitch! <laughs> try, try to bring me down! Pepsi, like no! A, like a great beast on the Serengeti! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, That's the God. breathtaking color palette of Damn straight accuse. I, I <sighs> love and I love it just as much as I love Dr. Dubs. <laughs> it is a two cake situation. I'm just I'm so happy with all I'm, of these horrible cakes <laughs> you're bringing to us. If you don't at me on Twitter with all of this art, I am re I am tweeting it myself. Everybody. <laughs> oh, okay. <sighs> okay, okay. Okay. Who breathtaking ha. color palette. The breathtaking color palette is derived using a scientific method of color assignment based on the product's essence and primary features. Uh, I don't see any like golden rectangles on top of this fucking color wheel. Cool. I don't know. I don't understand. <laughs> like the green and yellow, they're like green and yellow don't matter. Don't don't look at it. Pepsi. Oh, uh, I, I feel. Color, color, guess, yes. Pepsi. Oh, uh, so color, cool is greater than Pepsi. Got it, got it. Pepsi. Pepsi. All right, all right, let's, let's move on to the next one. Cool, cool fresh. fresh. Cool, fresh. Fre okay, we're going up. Yep, it's not even like color change. It's fucking like tint, you sons of bitches. Okay, so now we're at Pepsi oh, I, Max. I don't have granular Ooh. enough control. Oh, I know. There we go. We'll, 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 taint, we'll taint our view a little bit. Oh, there we go. No, it's perfect now. It's perfect now. Okay, okay. Pepsi, Pepsi Max. Max. Is cool and fresh. I get it. I get it. Sort cool of. fresh. Even though there's seven, there's four purples on the color wheel. <laughs> Let's drink it in, everybody. Drink it in. I gotta go throw out all my color wheels after this. They're all wrong. <laughs> Energetic, balanced, caffeine-free. That's right. I always, I always feel the energy yeah. when, when I have caffeine-free. <laughs> My caffeine-free beverages really do just help me kick into the day. I what? <laughs> ah, piss, piss pee is what we're looking at. <laughs> ah, yes, peepus. <laughs> oh, this is the peepus. This is a legendary peepus can. <laughs> I'm 
drinking, brother. <laughs> I... I... I wonder how hard they had to pitch this. They're like, hey, I know, like, blue is your Pepsi color, but what if we did not blue? <laughs> what if more different or blue? And then the men's fashion industry was just like, yes. More different <laughs> or blue. The cool. only other color. Fresh. <laughs> Fresh. White. So you, it's just, okay, you selected white. Just fucking blew out the wheel. Diet Pepsi. And then gray. Diet Pepsi. Fuck it. Whatever. I I don't know. Rich people drink Diet Pepsi. I don't. Look, we already sold you. I can't. We ran out of circles earlier in the document. We hit our legal limit. <laughs> where we're at. Look, look. Diet Pepsi is clearly just the beverage for when you feel nothing. No, no, no. John R.G., that that is the logical reason you would make it different color. That is like, oh, I want people to d be able to distinguish it on the shelves easily. But we're not in that zone. We're in the fucking concentric circle future zone. <laughs> Therefore, it's energetic. <laughs> look, look. If I if I have to, to hang on, let me peel away the veneer for one second. Let me be very real with everybody out there in chat today. The bright yellow non-caffeinated cans are a warning to those of us who are <laughs> substance dependent. We see that bright yellow and we're like, ah, shit, get out of here. Ah, it almost uh, bit me. <laughs> wait, what is, what is it called? I forget the term for like when animals have like really bright colors as a warning oh. to predators. Oh, yeah. Um. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's that. It's just a warning to caffeine predators. Like, don't eat it. Don't eat it. It's no yeah, good. This, this is toxic. You'll hate yourself <laughs> more than when you're, you're drinking regular Pepsi. Oh, man. Fucking. Oh, I'm sorry. Cool. We're not Light done yet. Fresh. <laughs> Fuck See, everybody. This... Look, this time the gradient is from the other side, not the inside out. The radial gradient comes from the other way. I so actually did drink... not notice that. Okay, so it's not a sunburst, it's an, it's an inburst. The world is collapsing into cool, light, and freshness. What drink did we get out of this? We're attaining the beverage color singularity. I really wish it was Crystal Pepsi, but it's not going to be. Oh, caffeine-free diet Pepsi. It's a ghost of a drink. That makes sense, actually. <laughs> it's the closest you can get to drinking nothing while yeah, still drinking Pepsi. caffeine-free and diet. What is it at that point? <laughs> <laughs> it's not for rich people, though. We've known that. Food coloring, mostly. <laughs> it, Bridget, Bridget, I love it. <laughs> God damn it, Bridget! Oh my god. <laughs> Kakashi pulls his mask down and it's just literally Pepsi Man. Yeah, actually, that's probably why we've never seen it. It's just too strong for all audiences. <laughs> all right, everybody. All right, everybody, okay. let's go. Oops, I gotta, oh, oh. I gotta zoom back out to a reasonable size. What is this? Creation of identity. Gravitational pull is what it is. It's the no. attraction theory, okay? The Pepsi proposition. Establishment of a gravitational pull to shift from transactional experience to an invitational expression. You see, you Grr. have your typical light path and you have your typical shopping aisle and these are the same. A direct <laughs> path, uninterrupted. <laughs> but the light path will bend with sufficient gravitational pull and the gravitation of Pepsi is like the sun. A burning mass in space, superheated, attracting the customer. Because everybody knows that the light path goes from motherfucking Earth to a star in space instead of to the sun. No, no, it wraps around the Pepsi, and to which, like, actually, wouldn't that mean, like, it would be, the Pepsi would be too bright to see, or would the Pepsi be a black hole, so it'd just be emptiness? I'm not, I'm the not Pepsi much expresses the relativity of space and time, Sanguinary. Uh, How do you apparently. not get this? The Pepsi proposition of the Pepsi Isle is the relativity of space and time made manifest by this, the 2008 breathtaking work in progress. 
if we, I, I know, if we implement these standards, <laughs> these design guides, sanguinary, if we if we make this whole, then we will become the pivotal center of the universe. You know, I guess this explains like why every time I walk into like the pop aisle, it does like a fish eye like effect <laughs> when I walk in there. And everything seems to curve around like the Pepsi section. It's always disorienting, but I just thought that's just how life was. But now I know it's because, you know, the Pepsi proposition. The Coriolis effect of the Pepsi aisle is very important. The Pepsi aisle 60 degrees! The Pepsi aisle 30 am... degrees! The Pepsi aisle 10 degrees! I am I am stunned they showed any sort of restraint and didn't put the Vitruvian man over this. <laughs> I am absolutely stunned. They just have like this this world this this man figure with the tiniest junk area I've ever seen. <laughs> And then, uh, stuck him in front of, like, this Epcot logo, but for Pepsi. <laughs> I... Trace geometries. The Pepsi aisle. It's many like, degrees. I wonder if somebody did, like, kind of a, a regular wireframe and, like, you know, the head design person slapped it out of their hands and they're like, No! We're in the future! Fucking wireframes won't cut it! 3D was an innovation! We're in the future! Alright, everybody. Creation of identity. The Pepsi <laughs> universe. The oh, universe instead of the MCU, it's the expands P like the PU. Exponentially! With <laughs> F parenthetical X equals E to the power of X. One light year equals 671 million miles per hour. Idiot. The Pepsi orbits <laughs> dimensionalize <laughs> exponentially. <laughs> X equals one light year. But behold the Pepsi planet. Don't worry, this is all gonna come together. This is gonna come together. I assure you, this is gonna come together. Just give me. Like a line of Coke. We're cutting it with a credit card right now. <laughs> X equals two light year. Pepsi Galaxy. What? The Pepsi Galaxy. Oh shit, it's all of those faces again. I'm really sad there's not like little eyes on these ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nut face down in the south quadrant of the yeah, Pepsi yeah, Galaxy. He... Of course, that's the south face of the Pepsi Galaxy. Yeah, they isolated him down there. <laughs> uh, uh, yo, do you think if this was any. Yo, Shadow later? Hog, smart oh, guy. Fuck. Smart genius. X equals eight, motherfucker. Pepsi universe. What is this image on the left even for? I guess, what is any of this for? It's, it's for the being expansion honest? of the universe. The universe expansion. Look, I'll go over the math again. The universe expands exponentially, Sanguinary. With F parenthetical X parenthetical equals E to the power of X. That's my favorite level from Mario Galaxy. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what's to misunderstand about this. I... Uh, uh, mm, uh, oh, wait, what? I just... I, mm, mm, uh, it's beautiful. It's perfect. I had some liquid caffeine in my kitchen. I think I'm gonna go grab that and just drink that straight. And uh, maybe, maybe after enough of it, Pepsi Universe will make sense, or I will ascend to the Pepsi Universe. You should be ascended. This is the end of the document. This is how they close. This is it. This is how they close. This is but, it. Yeah, this actually makes sense of the closing. They're like, soon Pepsi will take over the entire known universe. And, or like across the planet, I, eight light x equals eight light years in eight light years. So it is like what? How many? How many? How much does one light year equal? Is it like six hundred something? It equals six hundred seventy-one million miles per hour. I don't know why we have to keep going Plus, over this. It's very easy to remember. I know. I know. It's right. Okay. So in five thousand three hundred sixty-eight light years. Uh, that's when we'll e reach the known end of the Pepsi universe. <laughs> uh, 
And, and at that time, the wor we will collapse into the Pepsi singularity and all become Pepsi. All will become one as Pepsi. Oh. <laughs> Excuse, clear, like crystal Pepsi. <laughs> okay, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time to wrap up. Do you have the answers that you wrote earlier in your questionnaire? Because we're gonna do, we're gonna answer them again. We're gonna answer them again. We've been, we've been from convention to innovation, side railed over to future by Pepsi. We have, we have, we have introspected and returned closer to convention from innovation along the line of the future. All right. All right, uh -huh. we've, we've walked the gamut of time and space. We have expanded ourselves into the Pepsi universe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Having done all of this, I ask you, Sanguinary Novel, and also chat, I hope you have your answers yeah. ready. What is your earliest memory with Pepsi? Um, well, uh, I, going through this, I have unlocked uh, genetic memory, and I remember... Um, being a fish in the primordial ocean and uh, a single drop of Pepsi hit the ocean and then I thought what about legs and crawled out of the water to embrace the Pepsi can on the shore and drink it and knew, knew of intelligence and the, the Pepsi future. <laughs> you see, you see, I remember being superheated particles with Pepsi. It was always there at the creation of everything. The Big Bang. It I can't believe you fucking one up me, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Like Pepsi. Well, that's why I'm the spokesperson today. <laughs> it's true. I'm sorry. I failed. Tainted. I failed Tainted. my contract. Impure. <laughs> that's why you're not with the Pepsi agency. Accused. When I was first born, I saw the face of God, and it was a circle rotated at 10 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> not even. <laughs> <laughs> These are good answers. These are good answers, everybody. Now throw back Galaxy, holy shit. Made <laughs> <laughs> with real sugar, though. <laughs> okay. Oh, Christ. <laughs> All right, everybody. All right. I got two more questions. We got we to gotta review oh, these. Oh, that's great. <laughs> what is your favorite memory with Pepsi? I mean, when we discovered Pepsi nutting, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, there should be a better answer, but that's really it. <laughs> yeah, same. I, I, I have to revise myself. It's Pepsi nut all the way down. <laughs> God damn it, Dubs! <laughs> God, I love it. It's just like it's so subtle and so gentle, and you look down and it's like, oh shit, they're here. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh. Okay, okay. The third question. The last question What does Pepsi mean to you? Oh boy. Um, let's see. Uh, Pepsi clearly is. Uh, the beginning and the end, it is all. Uh, I have, uh, in this last part, ordered a pair of white tennis shoes and a white jumpsuit. Um, I, when, I, when it gets here, I will turn it uh, 14 degrees. And, uh, um, to, to enjoy yeah. it most appropriately. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I will replace, kind of like uh, the Soylent guy... Replace all of his food with Soylent. Uh, I will be <laughs> replacing all of my liquids with Pepsi. And uh, as soon as I figure out a way to replace all of my solids with Pepsi, we'll do so. <laughs> uh, so Pepsi is life. Pepsi is uh, uh, now my meaning. <laughs> you know what? Very yes, similar. Brother. Very similar. Oh. Yes, we are bonded. We are bonded now. As yes. one, Pepsi is unity. Pepsi is the universe. Pepsi is everything. Yes, brothers, sisters, non-binary friends of all stripes. We are now family. <laughs> I hope you understand that you're all on a list. The Pepsi list. It is all lists. <laughs> the villager into the Pepsi headband's fucking transcendental, Bridget. Holy fuck. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm from the Pepsi Village. <laughs> <laughs> you have a minute to talk about our Lord and Savior Pepsi. <laughs> Can you imagine showing up to some place that's like... <laughs> I will give you this free drink if you let us in so we can talk about Pepsi. Have you heard the good word about Pepsi? Pepsi I'm, is everything. I, I, I'm sorry, this is a do house. <laughs> I understand you like the derivatives of our Lord and Savior, Pepsi. <laughs> but it is but on the way to the path of the Pepsi singularity. If you w should just ingest a little bit of our Lord's blood, <laughs> uh, I think you will begin to, to see the world as it was truly meant to be. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Look, the, oh. the Mountain Dew is just kind of like the free uh, personality test. Like the Dianetics personality test is what we do to get you into the cult. Uh, and once you're in and paying us money, then you get access to the real Pepsi. And then and then life just improves from there. I've never been happier. This is how it goes. Perhaps again. <laughs> <laughs> Mike guy dropping his, his training weights and they're just Pepsi cans. Oh my god. It's <sighs> oh, okay. an hour and a half on this Pepsi fucking document. <laughs> <laughs> that is in fact where our hour and a half comes to a close. So this is this is the point where where I'm sorry everybody, this video is not sponsored by anything but my own ass, so hey everybody, if you're enjoying this content and you like it and you would like more of this shit. <laughs> Patreon.com slash wobbly is the most direct. I appreciate all your follows and subs, and I also love it when people share the VODs. <laughs> uh, I mean, this one's like a very nice, I wouldn't say tight hour and a half. We kind of like went around for a little while here, but like... <laughs> If you ever wanted to show someone the whole Pepsi document, but also didn't want to go it alone, this is a good VOD to share. This, this is this is cohesive. This is this is the tightest hour and a half of content I've ever produced. Also joining me today has been Sanguinary Novel. Sanguinary Novel is also a a meme shit poster, graphic designer, professional, a friend of the stream. Where can we find your stuff, Sanguinary? You want to drop it in the in the chat box? Everybody. Oh yeah. Um, hold on. Let me. Oh, please oh, support us. Support our friends. <laughs> and remember, I mean, I'll... every bit you give is taxed by Jeff Bezos the Dragon directly. And fuck that guy. <laughs> move on. Move on. Don't do that. Don't upstage. Go is dropping links. What the fuck? Move on. That's not cool. Uh, all I'll say is like. As a graphic designer, if you want me to create a document like this on purpose, <laughs> oh, I'd actually that'd be great. Like the Sopranos co Codex or like the Voynich manu manuscript, like documents <laughs> that are intentionally unscrutable. Making a, an intentionally unscrutable brand document for a brand that doesn't exist is kind of like a dream of mine right now. <laughs> Hey, hey, I might, I might actually have some talk with you about that. I could use, I could use some cohesive, <laughs> some oh, cohesive man. guidelines for some things. <laughs> How cohesive are we talking? We talk about like wobbly <laughs> universe cohesive. <laughs> look, look, we're living in the Pepsi universe, but I have this great idea for a for a dilation system which will create the snake hole between dimensions and universes. I mean, you do have like a 3D model of your character, so we could ro rotate it at all of these degrees. <laughs> Look, I'm rotating Wobbly Python in my mind, and nobody can fucking stop me. <laughs> <laughs> all of the degrees, all at once. Oh, oh shit. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking release the 10 degree Python. 